Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka Mono Blue Tron, back from my week-long hiatus with another episode of 10-Minute Testing. So today we're playing a deck that I haven't seen much buzz about, despite being pretty clearly one of the coolest strategies in the upcoming format. I'm talking, of course, about Super Heavy Samurai Kaiju, the premier deck choice for people who just can't deal with the fact that there are three different colors of cards in this game. Let's jump into deck edit and see what we're working with. So here's the list. Now there's a lot going on here, so I'll give you an introduction to the archetype, a discussion of what I hope the deck can do, and as always, the card by card. So first, Super Heavy Samurai is a deck that's really more of a meme than a fully recognized strategy. These awkward cards are also about 100% of the reason that Berserker Soul can never be printed in its original anime effect. The monsters in this deck also have really little heads but really big butts, which comes in handy since their flagship monster, Big Ben Kai, lets them attack while in defense mode and use their defense for damage calculation. Several also have fantastic effects provided you don't have any spell or trap cards in your graveyard, and it's always been a fun budget option for players, but unfortunately play a guy and hope they don't remove it isn't a particularly good strategy for winning the game. However, since their inception, individual members of the archetype have been slowly trickling out, maybe one or two for every new pack release, and with the reveal of a new synchro monster as well as a couple of really good main deck guys, we may finally have a critical mass of super heavy samurai monsters and enough good guys to build a competitive deck. While most of the old synchro monsters weren't enough of a reason to play Battle Ball, Tetsuo O the Tank Engine might just be enough to facilitate a build which uses Battle Ball's Synchro Theft effect to break up our opponent's board and establish a pretty formidable one of our own. Right at home in this strategy are the Kaiju, whose purpose is to chew through those problem quick effect monsters like Dryden and Masterpiece and ensure we are battling our Bolliest. If that fails, you can also just, you know, play Super Heavy Samurai as the silly board builders they were always meant to be. With that, let's look at the card by card. We'll start with the samurai themselves, three copies of Big Ben Kai, who can change its battle position when he's normal or specialed, and enables all of your samurai to attack from defense. Next is three copy of Thief, which is a weird card that can special summon itself, then self-tribute to destroy, then set like a toad, an opponent's spell, trap, or pendulum. Most important is the special summoning, which enables tribute plays for Ben Kai, or synchro plays with Trumpeter. Next is one of the new cards, and a fantastic one at that, Dai Hachi. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, my... Entire Japanese training is from watching Samurai Jack. This card can change its battle position on ETB, can attack and defense, and can swap itself to add a super heavy Samurai Soul card from your deck to your hand. After that is three copies of Scales, making his triumphant return to the deck. He can be special summoned if your opponent has two monsters and you have none, then Nordens a Samurai from Grave. After that is Flutist, who self-tributes to summon a Samurai from hand and banishes from Grave to protect a Samurai that's been targeted. Three copies of Giga Gloves, who lets you negate attacks so you don't die in one turn and stack your deck. Three copies of Battle Ball, who can target an opponent's monster and use it as synchro material for one of your synchro monsters. And finally, three copies of Trumpeter, who can special summon and is a tuner, and can also special again if it is used for fodder for a tribute summon. After that are the Super Heavy Samurai Souls, equip-type monsters that give your samurais additional effects. Peacemaker lets you tribute the card it's attached to to snag a samurai from deck and lures your opponent's monsters. Piercer gives your guys piercing, and searches a samurai to hand when it goes to grave, and fire suit changes its level to 5, but can be discarded from the hand to prevent your samurai from being destroyed. After that are the kaiju, one Jizikuri, one Dagorin, one Godarlo, one Gamsiel, one Radian, and one Thunder King. Finally, we have two slumber, which, you know, kind of screws up our whole no spells in grave thing, but can be removed to add a kaiju to our hand. In the extra, we're just maxed out on synchro options. We have Mushabi for 5, 2 Shootin' Doji for 6, 1 Stealth Ninja for 7, a Saratobi for 8, a Kyubi for 9, a Susanoo for 10, and 2 Tetsuo's for 12. This guy can discard 2 cards to destroy 2 cards your opponent controls, and can also banish spells and traps from Grave to Burn. Finally, we've got some rank 4 options, the Utopias, Castel, Tomato Dragon, and a Gigant. As a 15th card, I have put in a Superior Dora in case we ever get out two thieves and they live a turn to bypass the summoning restriction. With that, let's get into the games! Our first match is up against Tier 1 Meta Threat, some kind of red-eyes zombie tech. 
Um, the reason I've included this match, even though you're unlikely to see Red Eye Zombie at your next regional, is because this really showcases what happens if your opponent is willing to sit on a monster without a quick effect against this deck. Our opponent is going to go first. Uh, they'll go ahead and activate Blackstone of Legend in order to get Red Eye Zombie Dragon. That activates this terraforming for a zombie world. I've actually seen zombie world as part of a set rotation package uh, trying to cheese out some TK decks. Uh, seems interesting, if nothing else. Uh, they're going to flip up Coffin Cellar, and I guess we'll take their Shrink with Thief. Um, when we summon our Daihachi, we'll go ahead and get Arbitrator, then tribute it for a Battle Ball. We can now go into a 9, which we will do. Uh, that is very easily a QB on our side of the board, and we'll start getting in for 2,500 points of damage. Now, I don't know if he can out this card, because all I've seen so far is, you know, uh, <laughs> Red Eyes Zombie Dragon, but I assume he's got some sort of shenanigan going on, and uh, after I go ahead and decide to make a rank 4 play, I recognize that he is in fact right, and this Pyramid Turtle is going to uh, be very problematic for us. At this point in the game, I feel as if the only way he's going to win is by some sort of Coffin Cellar Burn shenanigan, so I go into a Tornado Dragon before attacking, and what do you know, it is Endless Decay. Uh, thankfully, 3250 is just conveniently 150 points less than my buffed up QB, so after he Blackstones again for another copy of Zombie Dragon, and finally sets this zombie world, um, I decide to tornado his back row, just hoping that it's not a battle trap, shrink his monster, and get in for uh, all but lethal. I believe I'm about 1,050 off. Uh, this should be game after I set this Giga Gloves, uh, just as a little bit of added insurance. He's going to use Blackstone to return it to his hand, set it, and end his turn. Uh, I know that that's Blackstone, and as a result, I won't waste any time. I'll attack, attack, and that's it. Our second match is against someone playing the new Cyberdark stuff alongside some old Cyber Dragon and just cyber strategies. Uh, we've opened pretty well. A couple of kaiju is exactly what we want to see, and even though we don't have a very good super heavy samurai card, we do have Soul Arbitrator, which can get us what we need. Unfortunately, we're going first, and this deck really thrives when it can go second and tribute stuff for kaiju. Uh, going into Daihachi and getting a copy of Soul Piercer and equipping is not a very large power play, especially for first turn. Our opponent's going to get Cyber Dragon Core for Repair Plant, and holy shit, just tribute our entire board for a Chimera tech. Uh, I guess this is all right for us since we have a battle ball in hand as a result of the soul piercer, but still pretty frightening. We draw an additional battle ball off of the top. I figure I might as well just go ahead and go into my 10 option right now. We're going to go ahead and take the repair plan because of the Susanoo's effect, do a whole bunch of damage, and pass back. Our opponent is going to banish core for a proto cyber dragon, get a dry, and oh no, it's infinity. Um, thankfully, infinity doesn't actually get over my guy, and I could attack, but I've got lethal in my eyes. I'll go for Gamciel and start attacking directly, but unfortunately he flips up, what is this card? By Road Sacrifice, which allows him to special summon a Cyber Ogre from his hand. Probably the weirdest Wabaku I've ever seen. Uh, no matter, we will take that By Road Sacrifice in case we ever add a Cyber Ogre to our hand. Our opponent is going to banish as much as possible for an ATN, which is a big problem for us because we are about to take a whole lot of damage, but thankfully this is a level 10 monster, so we should be able to go into to Tetsuo at any point here. Um, Battle Ball is going to allow us to synchro, and here's the biggest punt in history. I decide I might as well destroy the cards on his side of the field, expecting this to potentially be a battle trap, but what is it but a cyber network? So now I'm going to have to chew through an enormous board of guys, unless he accidentally summons one in attack. Uh... Well, it's been a fun ride, but our final match is up against ABC, and actually you know, competent deck, and I think the writing's kind of on the wall for this one. We're going second, which, instead of benefiting us, might actually prove to be a bit of a hindrance since so many of ABC's effects are quick. Unfortunately, our opponent also next levels the hell out of us, as you'll see in a second. Uh, they'll go ahead and activate Union Hanger for A, summon Photon Thrasher, and then A uh, to get a B, go into Tsukiyomi, use B to get C, and then elect, instead of making ABC to Soul Charge and make another rank for. It's interesting, but going into Rafflesia means that I'm not able to tribute over ABC, and therefore end up in a pretty awkward spot. We'll give ourselves the Jizzy Curry. I'm going to go for a flutist play, and unfortunately it gets negated. I figure I might as well get it off the board, uh, just so it's not able to be spun by a Castell or anything, and I have it available in Grave for a negation effect. They're going to get a gadget into a copy of the one, the only B, and then uh, spin my guy back and attack for just about a trillion damage. Uh, we have 200 remaining, so we, I don't know, might be able to do something. Uh, any play is going to involve summoning 
summoning flutist and equipping it with soul piercer which will then tribute for benkai soul piercer's effect can get us arbitrator which afterwards uh he will immediately tag out uh, electing not to try and banish our guy knowing we have flutists in grave um after all of the chains are done resolving we'll go into battle ball and i uh, i guess i decide to go into shoot and doji here it's not great but none of my options are fantastic and this at least removes a lot of the problem cards from his side of the board we'll get in for 500 but really attacking is going to be enough to beat us he would have to supremely outplay himself to do so uh, he activates castell will banish a flutist but unfortunately he has enough fodder for not one but two abc dragon busters which will blow us to smithereens so we're back with the deck um it's fun i'll give it that but Unfortunately, even with the new additions, Super Heavy Samurai feels very much like a, a please don't kill my one guy type of deck. The Kaiju Engine is good, but I think it's possible that playing an involved combo just to out an individual monster may not be much better than just tributing it for a Kaiju in the first place. Still, I have hope for these foolish Samurai Warriors, and maybe if they're able to sneak out a couple more busted releases, they'll be able to screw around in a post-link meta. But as it stands, probably not good enough. So that's that. I've missed recording these at 3 a.m. I hope you're happy to watch them at 5. Uh, if you'd like to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream or prep for Nats, I'm on twitch.tv slash monobluetron every Monday and Wednesday from 10 to noon Eastern Standard Time. Links are in the description. Additionally, if you have an idea for a deck or an archetype you want to see me play on a future episode of this show, let me know in the comments section below and I will do my best to accommodate you. Otherwise, I'll see you Tuesday.